What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as mental illness across all social media platforms. This is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice. I'm a diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and also validate the victims and survivors of said disorder. So today's episode is going to be about how narcissistic people use other people to heal air quotes out to heal narcissistic people use other people to get over and deal with their pre- previous relationships and things like that so <clears throat> one of the main questions that i get on my page uh on any of my pages or any of my platforms is like why do narcissistic people why do they move on so fast why do these toxic men and women and non-binary folks move on so fast like what is what is going on with them to get to the point where they just can't you know be by themselves for any period of time like when we broke up two days later they were with someone else why 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 because narcissistic people y'all this is a simple this is a simple version of it right here i read dr romany's book and she said narcissistic people uh cannot get validation from ourselves but we cannot inner validate self-validation is extremely tough and damn near impossible for narcissistic people to do because we don't feel like we're worth it i mean just honestly i don't feel like i'm worth it i feel like i'm never going to be good enough that type of stuff right there so unlike you who is not a non-narcissistic person, possibly, possibly, I'm joking. Um, unlike you, who is a non-narcissistic person, you can take time to heal on your own. Yes, it's tough. Yes, it can be. Yes, it can be traumatic. The trauma bond exists. And yes, it can be painful, but you can still do it. It is definitely possible for you to heal on your own. You know, you can take some time for yourself, deal with your own emotions, process your own emotions, and validate yourself. I, as a narcissistic person would have trouble doing that. So instead of dealing with the pain, the shame, the and all that stuff that comes with a, a breakup or a possible discard or that things like that, I would rather throw myself into someone else, love bomb someone else, become obsessed with someone else so I don't have to deal with those feelings. Because they, yeah, those feelings hurt, but I, they, I don't want to have to deal with them. I can't deal with them. So I need someone else to help me deal with those feelings. You see what I'm saying? So we use other people to heal. And that and that's why people keep asking me, like, are they going to treat the next person better? Is the next person going to get the same version or a different version of this person? Yeah, the next person is going to get love bomb, perhaps just like you did. So at the beginning of the relationship, it's going to be good, but it's going to be inauthentic because they are trying, especially if y'all relationship just ended, their new, the beginning of the new relationship is going to be inauthentic because they're trying to get over you. They're trying to process the shame and the anger and all this stuff that comes along with breaking up with somebody or somebody breaking up with them. Especially, especially, my voice cracking, y'all, if you discarded them. If you broke up with a narcissist, then they, yeah, they're definitely going to be in some pain and some anger and some rage and some shame. So they're going to use the other person love bombing the other person to help deal with and process those feelings and to help validate them to help validate ourselves to show you that yeah we are enough i am enough because guess what i found somebody else and this person loves me and this person is obsessed with me and i replaced you really really easily so it wasn't me it was you see how that works you by yourself you by yourself i'm not so that means that i'm healing and you're not that means i'm over you you're not over me and that's just the end that's just the, the simple version of it y'all because the, me as a narcissist yeah like and that's the difference which i know a lot of people ask like, what's, what's what's makes you so differently is that fact that the last time like, in 2020 when my wife left me i wasn't uh, yeah i could have went out there and jumped on the dating apps and found somebody really really quickly i could have done that i thought about it it came to my head I'm like well i guess i'm about to be single so i need to go ahead and get get you know hop in something else but i just looked at myself in the mirror i'm like then what's the point of all the therapy why are we going to therapy if we're not gonna just if we're not gonna apply that right now because I'm in a little pain because you're in a little you're hurting a little bit because you're angry, sit in it, deal with it. So I started dealing. I was literally said it. And I cried in the bathroom floor. I got angry. The next day I was reading the Bible. I was like, I'm not gonna throw myself into nothing else. I was like, regardless of whether or not she comes back. I'm not going to throw myself into another relationship. I'm not going to throw myself into another ingenuine, like a disingenuous beginning to a relationship. If I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna work, <clears throat> I'm gonna work on myself. And if she come back, cool. If she doesn't, I'll be working on myself with somebody else. And I know that sounds narcissistic, but that's, but that's genuine. This is me genuinely working on myself for myself. And I, I in turn, 
I would be better for the next person. I just would. Most narcissistic people are going to say they are going to tell you that they're going to be better for the next person to hurt you. I didn't tell her that. I was just doing it for myself. That's the main difference right there, y'all. I was doing it for myself. I didn't move on to someone else. I worked on myself. I kept going to therapy for myself. It wasn't for her. So many people are just like, yeah, I love my wife, but it was. I didn't go. I don't go to therapy for her. I do it for me. I don't work on myself for her. I do it for me. And when I work on myself, in turn, it trickles down into my relationship, you know, into my parenting. It trickles down into all other aspects of my life. That's what I tell people. I'm like, this is how it goes right here. The trickle down effect is real when you're dealing with narcissistic people. It just is. I'm going to process things the way I process them. That's just how, I, how it is, y'all, for me. You know what I mean? For me. This is how I process things. This is how I process the pain and the hurt. Like, I, like, I had to sit in the shame. And mo look, that's the difference right there. Most narcissistic people don't want to sit in the shame and deal with it on their own because we can't. We need somebody else. We need somebody else to validate our feelings in our existence. So we put ourselves in another situation where we throw ourselves into another relationship. We love bomb the other person. We have to get to know the other person. Give me, like, in, when I'm starting a new relationship, give me the blueprint. Tell me who I need to be to get you to fall in love with me. Tell me. I need to know. Tell me who I need to be to fall, get you to fall in love with me. Give me the blueprint to your heart. I need it right now. Give it to me right now so I can stop hurting myself. Not to help you be happy. Give me the blueprint to you so I can stop myself from hurting. So I can stop obsessing and being angry for a few minutes, for a little while, over this old person. Over the ex who broke up with me. Over, this, over my wife who left me. Over your husband who left you. Narcissistic people, y'all, that's what, like, we got to move on quick. We use other people to heal with. It's like we go to somebody else and we're like, we're like, if we, let's just say narcissists or like cell phones. When we, when we get discarded or somebody breaks up with us, our battery percentage is on like 5%. It's blinking red. It goes, we go in a low power mode. Like everything in our lives get dark. Just like the screen of your phone when you, uh, when the battery is low. So instead of, instead of just going, going and sitting on a charger, being able to charge ourselves up, we can't do that. We have to go find somebody else, another source, another supply, another person, plug ourselves into them and charge ourselves up. Get that validation. Get that supply from someone else. And I know what you're going to say, Lee, that analogy was fire because I keep, look, off the cusp, off the cusp of my mind, off the tip of my lips comes the fire analogy. So yes, that's off the top of my head. Woo! <laughs> Get dark like a phone screen. Y'all like that, didn't you? I know y'all like my new backdrop too. This is like, yo, this is not me. Uh, this is not uh, a green screen. This is like literally my backyard, like my uh, <laughs> my house. My kids are just in there sleeping. It's early in the morning. I wanted to come outside and do my video, but yeah, here's the spider web to show y'all. Yeah, we have to plug. We have to plug ourselves into someone else. So that we are, the, the pain goes away, the hurt goes away, the embarrassment, the shame goes away, and the anger goes away. But guess what? Just because, just like, just like cell phones, narcissistic people, we can plug into more than one person. So that's why a lot of times, even though I'm plugged into this new supply charging up from them, I can still come back to you and try to get some supply from you. I can reach out to you. I can be with this new supply, helping myself, helping validate myself, but I'm coming back to you. I don't let you go. I don't let you move on. I keep trying to reach out to you. I keep trying to contact you. A lot of narcissistic people, one person is not going to be enough for them anyway. So they're going to keep reaching out to the old supply, the ex or whatever, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to get them back simultaneously while being in this new relationship, trying to heal. Absolutely trying to heal themselves in this new relationship, trying to heal, trying to make themselves feel better in this new relationship, y'all. Just absolutely trying to do that. So if you're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person and they move on quickly, realize a lot of times it's because they are hurting. Everybody, y'all keep thinking that narcissists are some just some goddamn like just unhurtable people. Like, no, we got pain. There's pain in us. There's hurt in us. There's anger in us. There's a lot of shame and embarrassment that comes with us. Like y'all keep making it seem like, how, how do I hurt a narcissist? Just break up with them safely. Be safe, y'all. Because some people like, be safe. Because some people might, like, when their feelings get hurt, when their hearts get broken, they might go in this garden and try to send you to go see God because they're embarrassed. You embarrass them so much and you hurt them so much, they might go see, send you to go see God just because they're hurting. Just because there's a lot of shame with them. Just because they're embarrassed and things like that. Where my lighting go? Oh, it's too bright. 
Yeah, just because of that stuff right there, y'all. But I tell you, if you're dealing with a narcissist, a toxic person, and you break up with them, anticipate them either becoming obsessed with you or moving on to someone else really quick, or both. They can do both. They can still obsess over you and go try to find a new supply. They can absolutely do that. They can absolutely di divert their attention between two, three, four, five people. Validation. More than one, the, the more sources of validation that a narcissist can get, the better they feel about their situation, the better they feel about themselves. Like, will we ever be complete with one supply? No, I keep telling y'all that. No one person is going to be enough for a narcissist. They just won't be. You just can't be. And that's not me saying you as a human being are not enough. That's just me stating factual information that you can't be enough. You can't be enough. A narcissistic person doesn't have enough love to give you, to make you whole, to validate you fully. It's outside of the beginning of the relationship. The beginning of the relationship, they're gonna give you all of that. They're gonna give you, they're gonna give you all of that in the beginning of the relationship to keep to keep you there. You know, because they might look at this is the crazy thing. They might be trying to use you. They might have started you at the beginning of your relationship. They might be using you to heal from another relationship. So this might this might not be the first time they've done this. They might have been using you right now in this circumstance to heal from somebody else, to heal from something that somebody else did to them. To heal for somebody else breaking up with them. You might have been the new supply. And some people don't realize that. Some people don't realize that they were the new supply and a narcissist was using them to heal. They'll tell you, all my exes are crazy. I just I'm, look, I just got my heart broken. And here you go. Y'all keep wanting to deal with people who they fresh off a damn heartbreak or fresh off a breakup, not knowing who did what, and just trying to heal somebody. You can't heal somebody, y'all. You can't. You don't have the power to heal another human being, y'all. You can try. You can be there for them all you want to, especially if it's a narcissist. They're going to break you down, y'all. Whatever you give them, they're going to take from you, and they're going to keep doing it. They're going to keep putting you in that pain. They're going to keep putting you in that suffering to make themselves feel better. But I know I done rambled over my little time limit. Y'all be trying to keep you between 10 and 11 minutes. This is the 12. Y'all got, got some fire on this what's it, Saturday. Anyways, y'all, stay tuned for more live in-person meetup coming in Durham, North Carolina, y'all. Y'all want to know where the, new, the next meetup at? We're booking the, uh, book, booking the location today. Live in-person meetup. Uh, it might be at the Honeysuckle in Durham or uh, something else. Dirty Bull. We're going to figure it out the, over the weekend. The July 23rd, come out. Come say hey. Take some pictures. We're going to have a photographer there. Look, yeah, it's going to be an amazing event. We had fun at the last event. July 23rd, come to Durham, North Carolina. You know, it's going to be big. Y'all, we had like 35, 40 people come to the last one. Let's go. Y'all, come on. And it rained. Come on, come through. Appreciate y'all coming to the last one. Thank y'all for tuning in. Mental Illness is out. Peace.